Today I want to talk about continuities in respect to uh, the, not only the types of continuities, a bit of theory about continuity, um, what continuity should look like across the center plane of the vehicle when you're running down the Y plane through the center of the vehicle, as well as uh, um, some things to make sure that you look out for when you are um, making, checking your continuity or validating your continuity is correct. So as an example, here I have, the, imagine this is the center line of the vehicle, and I have a surface that's supposed to be perfectly smooth across that center line. In this condition, or in this state, I'm gonna go ahead and just simply analyze this curve here. What you'll see is that there's a break on the porcupines. At the bottom it touches, where obviously the curve's at, and as it comes up, you can see that there's a definite break. Now. What's interesting about this is that this surface here is a G0 condition. The porcupines don't touch. And I'm going to come back to this and, and show you why this is interesting. Okay, But I know this is a G0 condition. It isn't tangent. It's not curvature. And like I said, there's an interesting condition about this, which we're going to come back to. Now I'm going to come over to this curve, select it, and again, these are just intersections through these surfaces. Now what you'll notice here is this, this green envelope curve doesn't touch. But the quills here, where it goes across this boundary, let me reduce this a little bit, do touch. They're parallel, actually. So because they touch at this point and the quills are parallel, they lay on top of one another, I can plainly see that this is a G1 condition. It's also a G0 condition because the endpoints touch. Next, I'll come over here. And this is a G2 condition. This G2 condition isn't the most desirable when it goes across the center plane of a vehicle. You may get away with something like this in an interior component or uh, maybe you're doing something with a, a, a light green on the exterior. You may be able to hide some of the flaws. And again, this is a curvature, a G2 condition. It's G0 and G1, but it's not the most desired condition when you're talking about a hood surface. You don't want to see a reflection going across this in the middle of the vehicle. Same thing with the, the deck lid or the roof or, or something along those lines. So you, you want to make sure that it's even got a smoother condition going across, even though that it is curvature. And I know that it's curvature because the envelope curve, as you can see, at the top touches. It also is G0 and G1 because the point at the center, you can see the quill is there. Okay. Now this is another G2 condition. It's slightly different than the other surface. These surfaces look very, very similar, but it's the way that the curvature accelerates into the center line. When I select this, you'll notice that this is truly a G3 condition. Now, I know it's G3. I cannot tell where the curvature change occurs, again, through the center point. The reason is, is because the acceleration of the curvature coming into the center plane and going out on the other side is identical. So I have a perfect condition running across from one boundary to the next boundary on this surface. Now this, I'm going to pick this, this is an interesting condition. Technically, this here is G3. And the reason why I know it's G3 is because I took this surface, split it in half, and just offset the one side, or translated the one side down. And let me reduce this. But it does not fulfill G0, G1. Um, I should say G0. It, it does technically fulfill G1, it does technically fulfill G2, and it does technically fulfill G3, but it does not technically fulfill G0. It's broken here, as you can see, but the tangent vector of these is, is the same. So this and this curve are parallel. The curvature are the same because if you take a look at this quill or this this curve and this quill, they are the same. You can see the 5.303, 5.303. They're the same, so it has the same curvature. And then if I go to the quill just after each one, they'll have the same value as well. 
that means they are G3, but they're not G0. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is some of the times, and I'm exaggerating this, some of the times you may actually find a flaw with some of the analysis types that you use. Now I'm gonna go back to the very first one. I said this is an interesting condition. Here you can see that it is G0, but it is not G1. It is G2. If we look at this, we can see that these are the same length across these boundaries. This is definitely a, a G2 condition. And if you're really careful about it, you may again get a G3 condition without having a tangent condition. They are G0. It is technically G2. It's pretty close to G3, but it's not. So the reason why I'm bringing this up is, is we're going to do some various other types of analysis. I'm going to come in and do a connect checker on this surface. And I'm going to do a connect checker with internal edges turned on. And I'm going to turn on um, for G0, you'll see that it is perfect. If I go to G1, you'll see that I have an angle break on that. Okay, This angle break is at five degrees. But you'll notice that if I go to G2, that I don't have any issues whatsoever with the G2 continuity. So someone may come in here, do a quick analysis and say, yeah, I, wanna, I wanna check out my surfaces, I wanna make sure they're good. Oh, they're G2. If I go to G3, you'll say, oh, they're, they're even G3. I don't see any G3 break, okay? So in theory, this is a perfect surface for G3 and G2, but it's broken on G1. And this is where you have to be very cautious with your analysis. I'm gonna do the same thing with this. I'm gonna pick this, and you'll see here, this is showing as a G3. If I go to G2, ah, look at that. There's my G2 break. If I go down to this surface, remember I have G2, and according to what I was looking at earlier, right, I know there's no um, G3 condition, but in this case, the connect checker is showing me that it, well, it looks like it's got a G3 condition, okay? So, I mean, it doesn't matter what I do, how, I, how do I, how do I, you know, how do I um, analyze this thing, it's going to show up as a mistake. I got one connection going across the boundary. So I'll, I'll come over to this one and do the same thing. And you'll notice that those porks that I had on there earlier looked perfect, but you can see that there is a slight tangent break. This surface is perfect going across, and then if I pick this and this surface, you'll see maximum gap is not allowed. I have this maximum gap. I'm going to turn this up so it'll catch. But what you'll see here is I have a G0 break that's massive. I have a slight G1 break. According to tolerances, this is well within the tolerance band, but you can see G2 and G3 are still perfect. Now, once again, if I look at the porks on this, and I analyze this, you can see here, this is obviously not G3. I don't have acceleration coming in and across. If I zoom way up, remember it said it had a tiny, tiny little break. Well, you can see that there's a tiny, tiny little break. So the connect checker, yeah, it's a good tool, but it can give you false positives. In this case, you saw that, well, according to the connect checker, this was a G3 condition. So this is why you have to verify your surface over and over again and make sure what you're looking at is good. It isn't just simply, hey, it's this and it's, it's done. Let me go hide show. Another thing that you can do um, as far as analysis goes, let me go ahead and there we go, hide that, is you can go into view, you can use lighting, go to this, this photon and, and look at the photons on the surface. You can get an idea that, okay, yeah, you can definitely see there's a break. Visually, this one, nothing. It's perfectly smooth across that boundary. Here, you can see it is, again, perfectly smooth, but it wiggles a little bit more than this one. You can see how this one shoots off, okay? And then the same thing with this one. This one wiggles in a different condition, but it's still smooth. Now, this one, you can see it's definitely a tangent condition. 
and then the last you can see that it is a G0 condition that they they touch across the boundary but these photons do not touch so doing several analysis types is absolutely critical to make sure that when you're done with your surfaces you have desirable results as you can see here clean here it's relatively clean but there's still um, I would call this a defective surface or kind of warbly across that center plane so you have to use multiple multiple tools tons of them to, to verify it's not just simply hey, do the porks good look good does the connect checker look good because again you can get a false positive from some of these tools because again mathematically across these boundaries mathematically it may be there may be a gap but mathematically across that gap they could still have the same tangent vector they could still have the same curvature so it's very important you verify visually mathematically different tools that you have a good clean continuity